Hey everybody, how's it going? We are live. Another day on the Ben Jarofsky Show and another Ben Jarofsky Show with a mystery guest. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is it mystery guest week on the Ben Jarofsky Show? I think it is. Who will be on today? Who will be on tomorrow? It's a mystery. Oh. Oh my God. All right. I'm scaring myself. Byron Sick Joel Lopez will be on the program as well. But your Ben Jarofsky show for Wednesday, April 14th is just moments away. Before we do this, let's thank our sponsors. Sponsors like SEIU Healthcare, Illinois, Indiana, their sponsors, as well as the Chicago Federation of Labor and the Chicago Reader. ChicagoReader.com for all things there is to know the city of Chicago, where to go, what to do, what to eat, what to drink, who to hang out with. I don't know. All kinds of things in the city of Chicago. If you are a clueless Chicagoan, get a clue. ChicagoReader.com and also ChicagoReader.com slash Jarofsky, J-O-R-A-V is in victory, S-K-Y. There not only will you find an endless archive of Ben Jarofsky show episodes over 900, damn near a thousand. We're almost there. You will also find a way to help out the Ben Jarofsky show by becoming a bin head. It's a three tier system. You can either be in the alley, the Avenue or <laughs> Benny and Miss mystery guest. You gotta be a mystery or Benny Boulevard. Am I right? So you can find uh, chicagoreader.com forward slash Jarofsky for more information uh, and to help out the Ben Jarofsky show. Also, if you become a Boulevard or Avenue member, you will get a deal on Ben Jarofsky's latest book. Yes, it's the Chicago Reader, Ben Jarofsky's greatest hits covering 40 years. I'm not misspeaking. 40, four, zero <laughs> years. <laughs> My God. Of Chicago. I guess wasn't even born. He was in the cradle. No, he was in the crib going goo goo gaga back then. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> go get it chicagoreader.com slash Jarofsky find out more information the Ben Jarofsky show starts right now it is Wednesday April 14th and still live from downstate Illinois in my mother's apartment and live from his attic this is the Ben Jarofsky show Today on the program, a mystery guest. Oh my God, who could it be? And Alderman Byron Sigcho Lopez. And now your host, Chicago Reader columnist, Ben Jarofsky. Hello everybody, Ben Jarofsky here. We're calling this Traffic Stop Wednesday and here's why. Well, folks, for the last several days, I've been trying to make sense out of the senseless, which is, of course, the latest shooting by police in Minnesota. You know the details? Dante Wright, 20-year-old black man, pulled over by police while driving through a Minneapolis suburb, Brooklyn Center. Two police officers approach his car, ask to see an ID, ask him to step out of the car. Uh, they start to put him in handcuffs. He breaks free, goes back in his car, at which point one police officer, Kimberly Potter, pulls a pistol, yells taser, and then shoots him in the chest. Turns out it wasn't a taser, it was a pistol. Right was unarmed, he died. She resigned, she's a 26 year old veteran of the force, the former head of the local police union and a police trainer. She's one of the vets on the force who trains younger police officers how to do their job. Curiously enough, Derek Chauvin's on trial for killing George Floyd in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, just up the road from Brooklyn Center. He too was a police trainer. He was actually training some of the other policemen who joined him in the arrest of George Floyd. He put his knee on George Floyd's necks, even though there was no apparent reason for doing so, other than, you know, maybe wanting to torture or kill him. I have a hard time watching these videos for all the obvious reason, the sheer senselessness of it all, the fact that we keep doing the same thing over and over again without seeming to thinking maybe there'd be a better way of doing things. I've watched the Floyd footage, but I also watched the footage that went down before Derek Chauvin put his knee on George Floyd's neck. And I still don't know why police even bothered to order George Floyd to leave his car. The man was accused of passing a counterfeit $20 bill. I don't know. Write him a ticket? Why are you dragging him out of his car? If you see that footage before 
This is the footage before Derek Chauvin put his knee on George Floyd's neck. The cops are knocking on the window and they're cursing him. Get out of that car. I don't get it. But why the urge to pull the man out of the car for a $20 counterfeit bill? Back to right. Had many conversations with people about this. People said, Ben, he's not an angel. That's what people always tell me when something like this happened. Ben, he's not an angel. Ahmaud Arbery, he's not an angel. That was the man shot in Georgia by uh, his neighbors. He's not an angel, Ben. He was in a house. Did you know that? He wasn't even supposed to be in that house. It was, uh, they were building a house and he walked in the house. How do you explain that? I'm like, what goes on in someone's mind? Like, who among us is an angel? I'm trying to think this through. All the stupid, dumb things I've done in my life. I'm no angel either. That doesn't mean I should be shot. George Floyd, he's no angel. Jacob Blake, Ben, he's no angel. Back to right. They tell me, Ben, he had an outstanding warrant. Did you know about that? It was weapons violation. Misdemeanor charge that he illegally possessed a pistol. And then they look at you go, let that sink in. Like, he's no angel. And I'm like, let's assume for a moment that the charge is legit. That he was illegally possessing a pistol. And that that gun, therefore, was illegal and that he did not have a proper firearm card. Since when is that a capital offense? Now, let's go a little further. I'm going to make a confession here. I have no great affinity for guns or weaponry of any kind. I don't own a gun. I've never been attracted to guns. My dear friend Adolfo, for a while, tried to talk me into going to a shooting range with him. I'm like, I don't know, Adolfo. Come on. No, I don't know. Now, I understand why people own guns, why some think it's necessary. Absolutely. Not naive. I know why people enjoy, like, the sportsmanship of shooting guns. I know why people enjoy going hunting. I know all that stuff. I'm not trying to hate on anybody. I'm not trying to take away somebody's rights to own a gun. I'm just saying I personally not a big fan of weaponry. And I know that puts me at odds with roughly 45% of America that voted for Donald Trump and is dedicated to the Republican Party. And a day doesn't go by where I don't get an email calling on me to join their crusade against the radicals in the Democratic Party who want to take away their Second Amendment rights, want to take away their guns. I just got an email from Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Trump's former press secretary, running for governor of Arkansas, telling me, The radical Democrats want to take away your Second Amendment rights, but I won't let them. Sometimes they send me pictures of themselves brandishing weapons. Marjorie Taylor Greene, the congresswoman from Georgia, she sent me an email, a fundraising email. She's got some kind of high-powered rifle. People say, oh, Ben, those are just the nutcases on the fringe of the Republican Party. I'd argue that, no, the fringe is the center of the Republican Party. And to prove that point, I'm going to introduce you to Darren Bailey. The downstate state senator who's running for governor as a Republican, probably the front runner as I speak, he recently introduced a bill that would do away with the law that requires gun owners in Illinois to obtain a firearms license from the state. It's true. You can look it up. He says that the de- delays are so long in issuing these cards that those delays are an infringement on the sacred Second Amendment rights of people in Illinois to own a gun. So if that's the case, if you're just going to propose that we do away with firearms license altogether, why did the police even bother to make Dante Wright get out of his car? Why did they just allow him to go on his very way? Or to that point, why aren't Marjorie Taylor Greene, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and Darren Bailey joining the chorus calling for justice for Dante Wright? Reminds me of the police shooting right here in Chicago. It took place in the summer of 2018. I think it's all long forgotten in South Shore. Haritha Augustus, a barber, he was standing on 71st Street, minding his business. Police approached him, searched him on the suspicion that he had a gun. He bolted and ran, and a police officer shot him. I wrote at the time, where are the Second Amendment rights activists marching in the streets on behalf of Augustus? Man, I got ripped. Ben, you commie, he didn't have the right kind of license. Isn't that interesting? All these Second Amendment right activists, 
turn like into constitutional scholars when it comes to Augustus standing on the street corner on 71st Street. Didn't that, he had it one kind of license, but not the right kind of license. Now Darren Bailey wants to get rid of licenses altogether. When it comes to random black people on the street, they're a stickler for gun laws. But when it comes to Kyle Rittenhouse closing, crossing state lines from Illinois to Kenosha, he's a sacred citizen with his constitutional right to walk down a street with high-powered weaponry. I'm starting to think that gun laws are the new marijuana laws. Follow me in this, folks. For the longest time, reefer was illegal. But everyone smoked it, but only black people got busted for it. And when they got busted for it, people would tell me, Ben, they're possessing illegal drugs. Then these people would tell me that would go home and get high or watch a TV show where folks got high. And then they laugh at the hijinks of people who were high. Oh, that's Seth Rogen, it's really funny. I sometimes think in my darkest hours, all these laws, drug laws, gun laws, are just an excuse to lock up black people. We got a great show today, everybody. Byron Sixer Lopez will be here talking affordable housing. We've got a couple of housing activists with us, but we also have a mystery guest. Before we bring on the housing activist, I want to talk to our mystery guest. There's some kind of piercing noise. You hear that, D? Uh, that's one of our guests. Noah, if you could, please. There we go. He muted his mic. There so you there go. go. There you go. It's always the millennial guest with the piercing noises. Have you ever noticed that, ladies and gentlemen? Just see a little smile on the guest. Um, anyway, we have a uh, mystery guest. I thought it was appropriate with Byron on the show uh, that we would uh, bring in this mystery guest. He was on the show a couple weeks ago. He happens to be Byron's lawyer, Alderman Byron Six Show's lawyer, uh, the great, the legendary Adolfo Mondragon. Uh, is coming back to the show. Adolfo, you can uh, unmute yourself and introduce yourself uh, to everyone. Say hello. You're on mute, Adolfo. There we go. Oh, there there we go. go. Hey, Ben. Hey, Dennis. Uh, uh, the Adolfo uh, that I'm talking to, a frequent guest on the show, election law lawyer, a constitutional lawyer, a graduate of the University of Chicago Law School, all those fine things, uh, is also the Adolfo that I referred to in my opening remarks uh, as the enthusiasts who try to talk me into going to a... Uh, uh, where did you want me to go with you, Adolfo? It was like a shooting uh, range or something? Yeah, a shooting range, just so that you could have the experience of having actually handled and shot a gun and just have a perspective because you were you were thinking of writing an article and i said well why don't you just actually do it um because uh, i was on i think we were talking about uh carrying concealed laws and i uh said that i actually i i'm a holder of a carry and concealed uh license and that there are various reasons why i carry it and then i invited you to go shoot just so that you could have that perspective, at least whether or not you liked it or not, it doesn't matter. It was just so that you, when writing, that you could say, and I've even, you know, done this and I don't get the appeal or I do get the appeal or whatever, you know? Well, maybe when the, uh, I, you didn't talk, I think it was actually, I was writing about Harith Augustus, the barber that I was just alluding to on East 71st Street who was shot by police. Uh, and it I remember, been. yeah, it I was writing right. because uh, it, it was, I took the position, as I just stated, uh, that gun rights uh, supporters should have been defending him. Oh, uh, totally, he, totally. Because had, if I remember had, that that case, he had, he actually had a, a firearms identification card, but he did not have a carry and concealed law, which was just the next step that he could have taken. But because there's costs and fees or whatever, he didn't take it. Whatever reason, which is a precise, yeah. which is a precise Second Amendment NRA kind of argument would have been like, look, we should get rid of these fees and it shouldn't be licensed and blah blah blah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I want to point out one more time uh, that Darren Bailey, who is uh, running for st uh, re governor as a Republican state senator from downstate Illinois, is pushing uh, for a law that would do away with all requirements to have any kind of license in the state of Illinois. So, right. right. Uh, and if I'm correct, if I, I think the NRA type people are the ones that don't want any registration, don't want any licensing. They just want everyone to have this inalienable right to do, you know, to carry whenever they want without informing the government, et cetera, et cetera. Right. right. Unless it's in the case of... Unless it's a black person or a brown person. Right. Yeah. All right. So let's get to why I have you on the show with Byron. Uh, this is... By the way, just all you... As as Adolfo can tell you, I repeat, big gun uh, 
big believer in requiring people to have licenses for guns. I'm not joining Darren Bailey's crusade at all. Just <laughs> pointing out this irony here. All right, uh, we got Byron Cisco Lopez, Adolfo Mondragon. Adolfo is Byron's lawyer. We've talked about this a couple times uh, on the show not too long ago. You filed the lawsuit on behalf of Byron uh, to try to prevent politicians like uh, the former alderman of the 25th Ward, Byron's predecessor, uh, Dan Solis, Danny Solis, from spending their campaign contributions on their criminal defense attorneys. Uh, it seemed to make sense to me, but I'm just... All right, everybody. Seems like we have momentarily went down. Lost my network connection, according to the internet. Hang tight with us. I'll grab our guests, and the Ben Jarofsky Show will resume.
All right, everybody. I gave it the old college try. Tried my best to get us reconnected and having no such luck. Not sure what to do, so I guess it's going to end the program. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Thank you.